Hello and welcome to my week four pregnancy video slash how I knew I was pregnant before even taking a test. I love these videos. I am making these videos because they've been so helpful to me in my own journey of starting to family plan. This is my first baby, my first pregnancy. And I want to say thanks to all the women who have created their own videos on YouTube about this topic because I have found them so, so helpful. So much so that I am here making my own. If you watch other videos of mine and you don't necessarily want the pregnancy stuff, that's totally cool. You can always ignore these videos. But for those of you who find them, my name is Carolyn. I'm usually here on YouTube reviewing what I like to call happy, healthy things. And um, if you're interested in happy, healthy product often food reviews, then also subscribe for that kind of video. But here's the pregnancy series. As I sit here today, again, I'm in the fifth week of my pregnancy. It's my first child, and I'm gonna release these videos later. As I sit here, it is mid-May 2019, but I'm probably gonna delay them by about two months or so, so that I protect, you know, the situation you know i let it unfold naturally and privately and also i can control the release of updating our family and friends because at about five weeks very 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 few people know in fact two people know that we are pregnant i am pregnant um so let's go through timeline a bit i also really want to share the symptoms that i felt before even taking my pregnancy test. I thought I was testing early, but I got two digital positive tests, even though I thought I was early testing. Um, and I felt symptoms three days before I even took the test, like actual steady symptoms. So I'm gonna walk through all that today. I'm also gonna, in the sake of reviewing happy, healthy things, I'm gonna give my first impressions of some of the apps I've been using, and we'll start there. But there will be more videos like this, so um, look out for the next one as well. Sorry if you can hear any outside noise. I am filming right up against a window and we live on a major street in Boston. So um, I apologize if there's some kind of like rush hour traffic out there. So the basic thing that you probably know if you're watching this kind of video is a lot of how people talk about their conception and getting a positive test dates back to the day you ovulate. I did not take ovulation test strips. However, I have been tracking my period for years for other reasons. So I had lots of data to prove my cycle was about 28 days. It had been, it was anywhere from 27 to 29 days for years. So anyway, I knew my cycle was an average cycle length. And when we got married, I spent a couple of months temperature testing, or what's it called, basal body temperature testing, to see when my spike would happen after ovulation. And I saw through a couple months of just testing my, uh, taking my temperature first thing in the morning, that I ovulated really around day 14 or 15 of the cycle. We weren't even yet trying. We knew we were gonna start trying kind of soon, but I was just doing my research. I was like, I wonder when I ovulate. Cause you have to kind of know when you ovulate, ovulate in order to make sure that um, you have sperm around to fertilize the egg, blah, blah, blah. You might know these things. But what's surprising to me, and the reason I bring it up, is because I am shocked at how soon I felt symptoms. Um, I felt symptoms at eight, anywhere from six to eight DPO um, in the morning. So textbook wise, I was kind of textbook in my cycle, 28 day cycle on average, um, ovulating about day 14. It's kind of textbook. Well, the other textbook stat is that implantation of a fertilized egg happens at nine or 10, all the way to 12 DPO, but nine is like average. So when I knew that my cycle was kind of average, I was thinking, okay, if I, did ovulate if there was sperm there, and if it did fertilize, and if it does attach, it will implant around nine DPO. So in my mind, after ovulation, I was thinking I had a, a little bit over a week, and until it would even implant, and yet, which would mean, oh my gosh, I'm like rattling, <laughs> which would mean days after nine DPO, like four days after I would have enough HGC to register on an at-home test. If I was textbook, I would not be able to get a positive test until 13 DPO, 
Well, I felt symptoms at 8 DPO in the morning, undeniable. They are still going on. And a couple days after that, I was like, it's still early to test, but I'm really feeling like something's going on down there. So I took a first response digital test, which you would have seen if you watched that live pregnancy test video that I snapped. Um, and it was positive, like digital positive. And then the next morning I took a clear blue digital positive, pregnant. So I was, I once I first started feeling the symptoms, I was excited because it's like something is going on. And then a few days later, I was like, it's still early to test, but I'm gonna. And positive, positive digital. So um, I guess the only conclusion I can draw based on like those timelines, if you're someone who's trying to count your days or try to gauge when you can test or when you might implant and therefore HGC starts to build, my thought is I was just on the earlier end of implantation. If I was starting to feel that same symptom, that real pregnancy symptom at eight days past ovulation, I might have implanted around six days after ovulation, which is like one of the earliest days they say you can implant. So my little egg was like speeding through. That is enough about the numbers, but that is my timeline. And I really found that women's timelines were very helpful to me. So I wanted to run through mine. Now let's get into the symptoms. So that first symptom I felt, 8DPO, was a cramping. I would just simply call it cramping. Um, that started at literally 10 a.m. I remember I had just gotten to work. I was planning out my day and um, I felt this stretching. I like to describe it actually as stretching because that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like a really soft stretch. And um, sometimes it'll just be one side and it'll be like, mm, mm. <laughs> and other times it'll be uh, the other side and like high up. Um, but the symptom that I've been feeling nonstop since, so it's about a week now, over a week now, um, is this stretching feeling. It is my first child. My mom, who's one of the two people who knows currently, I could not keep these, <laughs> this kind of news from my mom very long. My mom says I might be feeling that because it's my first. And she's like, you know, your body's just starting to prepare, it's starting to do something it's never done before, so you're sensing it. But it's like one tenth of a menstrual cramp. It's very obviously in that area. I was like, this is not digestion. This is not, you know, gas or something. This is not, I ate something off. This is like in my womb, very similar to menstrual cramps, a stretching. And in general, I have been feeling it more in the morning and again in the evening. Um, actually, the evening tends to be the strongest time for this. I don't know why. But when every morning I've woken up since feeling this, I can feel it as soon as I'm waking up. It's like happening as I'm waking up. And then mostly throughout my day, I actually have been forgetting that I'm pregnant. And then I will obviously remember for many reasons. I'll remember it. But... Um, it's not really happening all day. Sometimes I'll have a little quick moment of it while I'm in a meeting or something. And uh, that's kind of funny because I'm like, oh yeah, you're in there. And then again, mostly it's happening at night. The other symptom I would say is really the only other symptom that's been steady is some change in breast tenderness. But that used to be a, this is really now getting TMI. Um, <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Breast tenderness was one of my most steady PMS symptoms, like clockwork a week before my period. I would get tender breasts. They would be with me for about five days. They would go away for about a day and then I would get my period. Clockwork. But um, this was very different and it came early. Let me look at what day it came. Four DPO. So that was so, so early. It was at the night, nighttime, four DPO. My breasts started to become tender and that is um, early for my PMS version, I believe. Yeah, usually it would be eight DPO or so, so it was like four days early, and it stayed with me, and it was actually very slight. So my PMS, breast tenderness, is very sore, very kind of painful, very distracting. Um, I, I feel it when I get up out of bed, like I feel the difference, it's kind of really noticeable. This version is uh, much more subtle, very similar to the cramps, right? Subtler symptom. And also it's only really happening if it gets pressed. 
So if I hug Greg too tight or when I'm taking my bra off, I feel the sides and things like that. But that's about it, it's, it's there. But it's actually much more gentle than my PMS uh, symptom of it. That's symptom number two. And then the third one I would point out is some little nausea and little food aversions. Not much. I've had one day where I had two moments of nausea. Uh, that was about 12 DPO. It happened um, right before I had breakfast. And then it happened mid-afternoon, or wait, yeah, mid-afternoon that same day. Just a small wave, undeniable nausea, but like a small little wave. Um, and then I had a moment of food aversion about, what day was that? 13 DPO, uh, my husband Greg said, let us let me make a paella for dinner. And I was like, it sounded so bad to me. And I've had his paella, it's wonderful, it's good. <laughs> um, but I was like, no, no, no. That's the way I felt, I was like, no, no, no. And all I said to him was like, like uh, it doesn't really sound very good today. But inside, of, it was a huge food aversion. So, that's been fun. Um, let's now get into the apps, because, ooh, light's changing. <laughs> Natural light for the win. Let's get into the apps I've been using. So, the one I referred to, I believe I mentioned it already. I hope this video alone has been helpful, but there's more to come. Do subscribe if you'd like, and I'm so, so excited to be starting this. Please do write comments in the question, or questions in the comments below if you'd like. I'm very happy to engage in the comment section as well, but congrats if you are in your own fifth week or fourth week, or you're trying to conceive, you're in that two week wait, I'm thinking about you, I feel for you, and I'm here for you. Uh, we're in this together. But I will see you in the next one, and thanks for watching today. Bye.